All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to the uh, special meeting for February 9, 2022, here at the New Pile Shelter House at 6.30 p.m. Welcome all. Welcome to the the uh, Facebook people that are out watching for our live stream meeting. So, uh, Ms. Parner, would you call roll, please? Sure. Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. And Councilman Roadwald is absent. Five members present. Right, thank you. And tonight's invocation will be done by Councilman Lindsay. Bow your head, if you would, please. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight to this group, this meeting, to review our charter, to discuss it. And hopefully, Lord, we can come up with a perfect charter for our city. We ask you, Father, to, to look over everyone that's here tonight, our police officers, our fire department, and our military, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 The United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so there won't be too much on our agenda, so we'll go down the list here. Uh, action on the minutes, none, communications, um, none, city manager's report, none, comments from members of the public. Um, and there's not a lot of public here tonight, so if we need, we can go back and do some questions with you guys, since this will probably be a pretty in-depth conversation tonight. Uh, but did you guys have anything right now? Okay, thank you. Uh, committee reports, none, resolutions, none, ordinances, none. Down to number 12, other business, uh, discussion of charter review. So uh, what we're going to be doing tonight is working with the charter review committee and going over their processes and, and what they've come up with so far and uh, just uh, see where they're at and what they have to talk about tonight. So I'll hand it over to Mr. Donnie Hall. Hello, everyone. Um, <clears throat> kind of just do some uh, quick overview of what we're going to discuss tonight. Um, essentially, we as a committee, the Charter Review Committee, was selected back in the August of 2021. It was our, our understanding that the Charter hadn't been reviewed in a substantial amount of time. So <clears throat> the way we took this uh, Charter Review on was essentially just pulling the raw Charter as written and kind of going through chapter and verse, uh, line by line, um, and essentially just evaluating. The analysis that we used was a three-question approach. You know, what is this, why does it exist, and what are the consequences? So if you, uh, in front of you, I'm sorry, you have a, a binder of material. Um, under tab one is the current charter um, without any suggestions or ch changes, just the raw document. Under tab two is something we're gonna talk about here in a little bit. It's called the Model City Charter. Uh, under tab three <clears throat> is our current working document of the, uh, of the current city charter, along with our revisions and suggestions, subtractions, and additions. Um, and then next under tab four, also something we'll talk about more in the dialogue, is, a, is the 2020 census report of New Car Lot. Um, so second, uh, we're gonna kinda go around to the different committee members. We have some other talking points uh, that each committee member is gonna cover. Um, but essentially, I'll start off with who I am. Um, Mr. Is it Baum? I'm sorry. Bon. Bon. Um, and I believe Mr. Lindsay weren't here when we were actually selected. So we went through a formal interview process where we kind of talked a little bit about ourselves and, you know, essentially kind of, you know, what our angle is. You know, why are we doing this? Um, so I think in the spirit of dialogue and discourse, I think it's, it's you know, genuine to kind of let people know who we are and, you know, why we're here, why we've invested all this time. Um, so I'm Don Hall. I live at 609 West Jefferson. I was born and raised just outside of town on Funderburg. Um, my mom was a school teacher with Tecumseh for a little over 30 years. Uh, my dad was a local business owner. And uh, outside of the 10 years that I spent in the military, uh, New Carlisle has been my home. Um, I did get the opportunity to travel the world and the country and live in different communities. Um, but I guess what kind of makes it relevant to this discussion is I chose to raise my family here. I'm a father of four kids. Uh, we invested in one of the older homes and renovated it on Jefferson Street. And, uh, you know, as my wife tells me, this is where we're going to stay. 
and uh, it's important to us, and it's important to me. And um, so I want to just give back to the community that, that helped raise me. Um, and that kind of leads into why we're here. So we met about 13 times. We meet every single Thursday at Lee's Chicken, um, where we essentially meet for between an hour and a half and two hours and just review the charter and go through and discuss it. Uh, we made some really great progress leading into the holidays. We were a little over 30% through the charter. Our objective was to have this thing reviewed by spring. So we could come to you guys, let you know what our suggestions are in hopes that we could get this on the ballot in the fall of 2022. So as we go into this holiday season, our awesome researcher, Pat Krabacher, uh, discovered this model city charter. Um, and it's something that the National Civic League had recently published. And it's essentially a charter that can be used for all. Um, some of the things that we had discussed is, you know, we wanted this charter to read in layman's terms. So the average citizen would be able to read the charter and understand it. Um, so as we started re reviewing the model charter, we felt like we were at a bit of a crossroads. So we said, why don't we take a two week break and let's all review this 80 page document um, <clears throat> and then come back after the holidays and see what everybody thinks. Well, we all unanimously said, this is a great document. This thing is right in the vein of everything that we've been talking about. Um, strategically, I think it could be very ben beneficial to the city. Um, there's a ton of commentary uh, that's interlaced within the charter that kind of helps explain the importance of each section and why it's you know, formulated the way that it is. Um, so, uh, one of the objectives of tonight is to discuss whether or not we should pivot uh, with where we currently are in the charter review and start the adaptation of the model charter and start you know, essentially doing what we already have. We have some great language already written. Um, but one of the things that we want to discuss, if you open your binders inside your left tab, is a document of our preamble. This guy will hopefully help paint a better picture of kind of how we're working. Um, the first preamble is the model city charters preamble. The second one is our current city charter preamble. And the third is what we would like to propose to you guys. Now, you guys are probably wondering, you know, there's a lot in the charter. Is this really what you wanted to borrow everyone's time for to just talk about the preamble? Um, if you look at this, the last sentence under the model city charter or our, <clears throat> our proposal, I'm sorry. Um, what is listed, what makes this new preamble unique is we list out the values of our community. Now, while we want to foster, you know, a representative democracy, um, what the charter is is our city's constitution. So in America, we have a, cons a, a, Repu a Republican or Republic uh, constitution. So we elect representatives to uh, <clears throat> essentially balance the liberty of everyone that they represent. Um, so in that vein, to, if you're a representative of the community, one of the balance tests is that we would ask of you is that you would consider the values of our community when you're making decisions on city affairs. So <clears throat> we have proposed some values that we believe are important, <clears throat> um, but we would like to have some, some kind of dialogue about this. Um, you know, another thing, I've, I've never been an elected official, but you know, uh, through my studies, you know, some of the, the weighing factors is you know, major, majority rules, you know, it's democracy. What does the majority of the community want? Um, I'm not sure if many of you saw uh, Mayor Lowry's Facebook post on his community page today, but he discussed about community interest uh, of having you know, alcohol served in the community, a classic, you know, classy place to get a glass of wine. Um, 
Now, you could run a petition and you could ask, you know, majority of the room, hey, what do you guys think? Do you guys think you would like to have a drink with your, your spouse, um, you know, here in the town? Um, that's, that's one variable that you should weigh. But another variable should be, does this fit our values of our community? So explaining exactly what our values are, when we were in discussion about this months ago, we all kind of had our own sense of what the values of New Carlisle is, but I'm not sure if we asked individually, without any help from others, would we all agree on what the values of New mm -hmm. Carlisle is? Well, I talked about strategy also with this charter. So I believe that we are in a position uh, in our country right now where <clears throat> people are no longer when you think about families, they're not just considering what the commute time is, what the cost of living is, what the state rating of the school is. I believe that people are also considering how does my values measure up within this community? So I believe values could be something that could be strategically marketed for our city. And I believe there is an abundance of people out there um, in these new suburban, suburban areas uh, in which very few people are actually from. You know, m these are new developments where people have come from all over and collaboratively try to tape together a community. Um, you know, everybody's houses look the same. So in theory, we should all get along, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that experiment is failing. And I think people in my generation are now like, well, I really care more about getting along with my neighbors and having a sense of camaraderie and fellowship. And I think that's where values are critical. So with that, I'll stop talking, and I'm going to read this last sentence here just to lead into Ms. Krabacher uh, talking about her first principle. But <clears throat> by this action, we secure the benefits of home rule and affirm the community's values of representative democracy, professional management, strong leadership, public engagement, diversity and inclusiveness, and regional cooperation. And now I'll pass it over to Ms. Krabach. Thanks, Don. I wish my phone would quit ringing. <laughs> so, hello, everyone. You might know me as a former Charter Review uh, Commission member in 2005, a Parks and Recreation volunteer for seven or eight years, or as the organizer of the HELP literacy program of 20 years ago where we taught 100 community members English, and of course, more recently, as part of the community garden. I've been a city resident for 30 years and grew up as an Air Force brat, which means we, my dad was in the Air Force and the kids were called brats, which means we moved to England, the East Coast, and the West Coast before my dad was assigned to Wright Patterson. Attending Stebbins High School, I heard Steve Kirk's remarks about New Carlisle in Babs Knievel Bar and Grill and just a block and bridge away. So my curiosity about the isolated village of New Carlisle started even before New Carlisle became a city in 1973. After 39 years of working as a contracting officer for the Air Force at Wright Pat, I retired in 2014 and have traveled to Nigeria and Haiti where I experienced firsthand the realities of societies without the words that open our proposed preamble, representative democracy. The ninth edition of the Civic League Model City Charter is in your book, and we found this updated template in early January. We were impressed with the clarity of the language and the explanatory notes that could help all city officials and city residents to understand our charter and then more effectively engage with city officials. Council manager form, which we have, is a unitary system rather than a separation of powers and is a form of representative democracy. As citizens, we benefit from the council manager form, which gives democratic governance and effectiveness, efficiency, and economy. Can you imagine each New Carlisle resident having to vote on every ordinance and policy change? However, under this council manager form, we should strive to involve a full range of New Carlisle citizens so that we, the collective we, really understand the impacts of proposed changes and consider new solutions. <coughs> Ideally, our council and city manager would collaborate that is partner with residents throughout the entire decision-making process. So let me ask you a few questions. 
what issues need addressed to benefit all citizens and to posture New Carlisle to attract businesses, partner with our schools, nonprofits, and more to develop our citizens? Will decisions of our city government and planning address the needs of citizens during a sustained unplanned emergency? Or at the centennial of the city of New Carlisle in 50 years, that's in 2073, will New Carlisle even be a city in 50 years? The Ohio Revised, Revised Code section states, cities at any federal, at any federal census having a population of less than 5,000 shall become villages. The 2020 census data shows our population is just over 5,500, a loss of 200 residents since the 2010 census. It also documents our two minority groups as Hispanic and biracial. The 2020 census is at top four in your binder. So clear, understandable language in our charter fosters dialogue, which is critical to our representative democracy. It is exciting that council manager cities have a stronger record of innovation than mayor council cities. I don't think it's too much to imagine that New Carlisle citizens could help our leaders to think through complex issues and help to create new and better realities for New Carlisle. Broad citizen input must be encouraged and obtained using new technologies and building trust. Here is another question. Can we ensure that a Spanish version of our 2022 charter is available to our largest minority population? While we hope for a better New Carlisle in the future, it will take work, transparent dialogue, and partnerships to envision and then to create our shared destiny. Research shows that representative systems tend to be biased towards the representation of more affluent classes. Transparency and the courage to dialogue with all citizens is critical to keeping our city, our representative democracy, healthy today and in the future. Let me pass the baton to Jason McPeak, who will present thoughts on another word important to our charter preamble, professional management. Jason. Good evening, everyone. Jason McPeak, 619 West Jefferson Street. <clears throat> Professional management is another shared value of our charter preamble. Professional management is an essential necessity for a successful and organized city. Randy Bridge is our professional manager at the highest level here in New Carlisle. While Randy does not reside within the city limits, we are proud of his interest, values, and commitment to our city. We should expect all city associates to not only be professional, <clears throat> but human as well. Professional is defined as a compensated or paid position, but professional should also mean experience with strong morale. I believe all city employees, contractors, and volunteers should share our common vision. We chose New Carlisle five years ago because of this New Carlisle city size, the location, and historic designation. My family of I and I have lived in large cities such as Phoenix and Denver, Colorado, myself born in Ohio. New Carlisle provides great holiday and historical events without leaving our neighbors. We believe New Carlisle is the affordable median between larger city life and the small town charm we desire. The city administration shall be professionally managed at all levels. There are full and part-time duties and responsibilities that are required by a city our size. The professional manager for that administration should lead with compassion and not off and knowledge, not only for its constituents, but for each other. The responsibility of the city management also falls on the shoulders of the mayor, the council, and every other city staff member. Professional management is important to our city, our local businesses, and every citizen in New Carlisle. The city charter can assist the city manager and associates in not only day-to-day -day act activities, but also long-term objectives, goals, and agendas. Professional management begins with professional leadership. I'm gonna hand it off to Ryan Matlock. Sorry. Hi, my name is Ryan Matlock. 
I moved to New Carlisle about seven, eight years ago after my husband and I started a family. My husband was raised in this community and always wanted to raise a family in a community like the one he grew up in. As life would have it, we decided to raise our family in exactly the community he was raised in. <laughs> my aunt worked for Tecumseh School District for over 40 years and always spoke highly of this community and the education Tecumseh provided. Aside from raising my children, and on occasion my husband, I've worked the last 10 plus years in various healthcare outsourcing strategy roles for one of our local hosp hospital networks and a large health insurance company. Today I'm going to speak with you about the importance of public engagement and how to drive up community participation. Public engagement contributes to the pursuit of the common good of the community, making a difference to the city and the people being served. These are future neighborhood volunteers, civic and community leaders, commissioners and elected officials. In whatever role they choose, these are the individuals who will be more prepared and more qualified as informed residents. Access to information and electronic communication is key to the success of public engagement and community participation. It allows citizens to more effect effectively share their views and affected decisions. As city leaders, we need to work to connect with community members in a socially distant way. Give me a minute. Online meetings and public forums have become the new normal as in-person meetings have become almost impossible. Online tools like email, social media, Zoom, and SurveyMonkey have become a vital way community members stay engaged, as well as getting in touch with their elected officials, both before and after COVID. Online formats have become necessary to drive public engagements, encourage participation, and keep our citizens informed about our city. Like so many families in New Carlisle, my family is constantly on the go. Being involved and up to speed on what is happening in our community is very important to us, as I'm sure it is all of you. Early notification is crucial. The sooner we learn about major decisions being made, events that are happening, changes that will be coming, the better. Advance notice allows us time to plan for how and if we can be involved. Since moving to New Carlisle, I've constantly been on the search for communication forums that I can leverage concurrently with our lifestyle. There are several privately run forums that have been created by some of our local citizens that have been extremely helpful. Dave Souter, a longtime resident and Tecumseh graduate, has used his personal Facebook account as a setting to capture and share Tecumseh athletics performance. Mr. Souter travels almost to almost every Tecumseh sporting event and takes pictures, videos, individual player stats, and overall game scores. Dave has been doing this for years, but has found a way to use technology as a tool to document his what he's passionate about and share it with our community. Using Facebook enables Mr. Souter to capture many of Tecumseh's moments in history and allows our citizens the ability to look back on these milestones for years to come. To keep a pulse on news and information in New Carlisle, I found a forum called What's Going On, created by Mike Lowry. This site was extremely useful, especially when I had just moved to the New Carlisle area. There are multiple posts today offering many of the updates, highlights, and tips and tricks right at my fingertips. The site helped me learn more about the city as well as other citizens, groups, and businesses in the area. This helped guide our family to organizations we could get involved with, events taking place, and decisions that were being made. I still use the site today, more recently for inclement weather tips, new business notifications, registration for local organizations, and how to put my name in the hat for the best yard in New Carlisle, though I've never won. <laughs> These are just some examples of how technology has been used locally to keep our citizens current on information they want and should know about. The issue with online forums is controlling the information that's being shared. There are so many private forums sharing information that it's hard to be sure that what you're reading is accurate or misinformation. For example, on Tecumseh Moms, there was a notice put out recently that school had been canceled and it was incorrect. Due to this post, I'm sure there were several students late to school under the assumption that what was posted was, was accurate. I believe that our community would benefit from a city-owned and operated communication forum and or channel to share information regularly and drive public engagement, a site that can be accessed while our citizens are living life on the go and provide the comfort of knowing that the data they're consuming is accurate. City leaders could partner with Tecumseh to leverage the talent pool of their student body. Principal Oaks at the high school could introduce potential interns from the student council or other student groups who are excited for the opportunity to work part-time for our city 
to manage and maintain this communication platform as communication liaisons. Students could gain valuable work experience on their resumes for future careers in college, while the city benefits from a pool of talented individuals who are extremely knowledgeable at staying engaged online. This initiative could help bring our community closer together and create a collaborative partnership that all citizens have the opportunity to participate in. Public engagement is key to the strength of our community. To further support this approach, our team elected to record on Facebook Live and share it with our community to encourage their input and participation. Thanks for your time. Next, you're going to hear from Kathy about diversity and inclusiveness. Thank you. My name is Kathy Wright. As a lifetime citizen of our city, I've been gone a few months for some, a few times for some months, but I always come back. <coughs> New Crow is my home. It is where most of my people are, and it matters to me how my town provides for my family after I'm gone. At my youngest, it was a tiny village of farm homes with huge gardens, chickens, and the occasional hog or horse, and our brand new blank plaque. Churches and banks were this farmer's retirement village claimed to fame. My village hometown served me well. It gave me everything I needed for a full life. I could jump on my bike and go to the library, bowling alley, the skate park, or the creek. We had a record store, a head shop, a candy store, an ice cream parlor, fresh donuts, and of all things, a pharmacy that sold kittens and puppies. <laughs> if I dared to do anything bad, the news would hit home long before I did. I felt attached to my family and my village. Everyone had a subscription to the Nicolau Sun, and most even had the daily Springfield paper. Shoot, some even carried the Dayton paper too, so they would know what was going on in the town they worked. Council meetings were wall-to-wall -wall people who brought their children, seen but not heard, and I remember leaning bored against the jailhouse bars. In 1973, there was such excitement when our village got the population to become a city. Everyone was talking about it, the benefits of being a city, attracting more businesses, better roads, nicer parks, more money for the coffers. But instead, these 50 years have seen a steady decline. Not in homes, we've added even more homes, bigger and better homes. But the decline in service and activities didn't keep me away. My feet had already attached to this place. It's where I've always been included, a part of the big plan. They're my streets, my stores, my pride in seeing how nicely folks treat each other. The word inclusion I learned as a young woman just stepping out into the world, that word was set aside for individuals mm -hmm. with developmental disabilities. It was my job to take them into the community and work side by side in their lives, helping them adjust to the work world and the world to adjust to them. There's always been one or more parts of our population that haven't fit in here, and I hope that is something we'll continue to work on. The buzzwords diversity and inclusion are walking hand in hand these days, and that makes sense. The lessons of diversity are extremely important, and they're with us for the long run. But it is the word inclusion that reaches out even farther, beyond the gender, the race, age, and ability. It's a human need to be included, to feel valued and accepted. So we must talk about what is seldom mentioned, and that's community inclusion. The long definition is the process of improving the terms on which individuals and groups take part in society, improving the ability, opportunities, and dignity of those disadvantaged based on their identity. The community of New Carlisle, like much of our country, has acquired a negative tone, an us versus them sort of mindset. This creates difficulties in managing our small city and in pleasing the constituents. Including people and valuing their input, appreciating their opinions will make them feel a part of the bigger pictures. In these 50 years, 1973 to 2023, we've done a surprisingly good job of turning into a city. And yes, it's been tough. At times, it felt we were sinking to the depths, but we pulled it out. I feel, through nobody's fault, but changing times and progress, 
In our focus to achieve enough money to maintain our city, we have left the citizens floundering to find their roots, to feel included and valued. The best thing about inclusion is that it needn't cost a dime. It's an old-fashioned sort of manners and people-directed speech. Words put people first, and our actions speak louder than words. Right now, the city is working to make water shutoffs a reduced thing, hence saving the citizens money and making their lives a little easier. How many people know? Is it a secret? Of course I know it's not. But how much better would it be if the people were included in this knowledge? It's a good thing. We must put people first in words and actions and include them in the knowledge of all the decisions that are made. Now, let me introduce you to Scott. Well, I'm probably not as good a storyteller as Kathy, but uh, <laughs> Scott Griffith, uh, we're finally New Carlisle residents for two years, 719 Colony Trail. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> My wife Kim and I, we are the owners of the Lee's Famous Recipe here on Main Street, but we also have six other locations, three in Springfield, uh, Piqua, Sydney, and Bell Fountain. And I'll tell you my new Carlisle story, and it started in 1973. And my dad was hired as the general manager for Famous Recipe, the whole company, and his job was selling franchises, and he had just bought the two stores in Springfield in 70, uh, open June 10th, 72. So one day he was in an airplane with his boss and they were flying back. They saw Springfield on the ground, they were flying back to Dayton. And his boss said, hey, what is that down there, this large community just west of Springfield? My dad said, that's New Carlisle. And he said, well, you need to put a restaurant there. <laughs> so he did. Thank you. So he did. He feeds half the city. <laughs> yes, he does. And I started working here in 1973, and Famous Recipe opened on Main Street, and New Carlisle had just become a city, and it was an exciting time. And um, Kathy described that. But also, we lived in Vandalia at the time, and our next-door neighbors, uh, uh, my girlfriend at the time, also worked here. She's now my wife. Her mother, Mary Lou Strom, was born in New Carlisle in her home on Lake Avenue. And her dad, Kim's grandfather, Earl Strom, barbered here downtown uh, for 50 years, along with his dad before him. So it, this town has always felt like home to us. It finally is for Kim and me. And uh, I feel like in large part that is because of the shared values that we are talking about tonight. You know, what causes people to want to live here, work here, and raise their children here? It's those values. Mine that I'll talk about is regional cooperation. Emphasis on cooperation. And I have myself almost 50 years doing business in other communities at this point. I get to see firsthand how cities benefit from cooperative efforts. And when the city takes a lead role in partnering with businesses, schools, churches, community groups, and even other government agencies, great things happen. I have two examples. The first one is ha just now happening. The city of Springfield learned that Springfield High School wanted to plan a business advisory council. And their goal is to learn from employers how to prepare their students for the local jobs that are unfilled right now. It's a great need. The city learned of this, and the city manager joined this effort as a co-chair of the Business Advisory Council so he could help invite more leaders to the table. And Brian Heck is his name. He used his relationship with local business leaders to do exactly that, to help aid Springfield City Schools in this effort. That meeting was last Wednesday, and there were, far, there were far more business people at the table because the city manager um, added his help. So another point, our Tecumseh High School principal, Mr. Oaks, needs to form a business advisory council right now. He has the same task. And my question is, wouldn't it be cool 
if our council would ask our city manager to lend his help and, and use his relationship with the business people in town to help to come to prepare our students for the jobs that need filled right here. I think that's a cool idea. And my point is, cities can be a major part in growing and retaining business and the workers they need. My second example, this is the city of Bell Fountain. I know these are bigger cities, but um, those of you who've been to Bell Fountain in the last couple of years might have noticed that downtown has things going on again. And um, the uh, merchants in downtown Bell Fountain, they identified a need for, I'm going to call it wayfinding signage, which is there are so many visitors coming to downtown that they didn't know where, say, 600 downtown or the other restaurants or other shops are. The wayfinding signs are the ones on the, every street corner that say Penny Lane this way. The only problem was that these signs were against city ordinances. So one of the local business people in town had an idea. He got with several of the other business owners downtown and they fabricated a wayfinding sign, a real sign with directions to real stores downtown. And one night after dark, he put it in downtown Bell Fountain, right downtown, <laughs> right in front of the Chamber of Commerce. He installed it. And um, the next day, the city eventually found out about it. And you know, they sent an inspector out to look at it and determine that, hey, this is a violation. They found the guy that put it up, said, hey, you need to take your sign down. And this guy's question was, I have 30 days, don't I, to take it down? I said, yeah, 30 days. Hmm. So he spent the rest of that 30 days gathering support from all the merchants downtown to get a proposal together to change the city ordinances. The city administration helped to, them to write the proposal so that they could bring it to council, and council adopted the, uh, the new proposal to allow wayfinding signs. You can still see that sign downtown with about a dozen more of them on every street corner. And my, my point is that the city can play a big part in sustaining and growing local businesses through cooperation. So there are more examples I could have used, but collaboration starts with a spirit of cooperation both within our city and throughout the region. And what we're asking city council to do is to take a lead role here by leading the way in cooperation. A unified voice of leadership is the starting point for the great things that can happen here in New Carolina. So that's regional cooperation, and I'll hand it back to Don Hall. Could take a second? Sure. Real quick, I just want to give you guys a, Emily had to leave. She's our clerk. For those you don't know, she had a uh, she didn't say family emergency, but something popped up, so she did have to leave. So uh, we'll have to just we'll have to do a journey ourselves or something. I mean, we can't expect her to stay if there's something going on with her family. So I'm taking some high-level notes if you need them. So no, well, she'll 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 do. Uh, she always does her notes off of the off the video oh, okay. the next day. Just the only thing she was going to have left to do was call adjournment. So okay, because there's no other business today. So thank you though. So hopefully, is everything's okay with her though. No, no. Okay. I think we needed a pause for a little talking. But, um, so also, just I guess general house clean keeping, it looks like we lost our Facebook live feed. Um, so those out in YouTube land will post this video to Facebook. Um, so fail on my part. Apologies. Uh, okay. So I get the pleasure of discussing strong leadership. So first, I'm just going to lead with, I feel it's somewhat disingenuous for me to, to look at the five of the city council members that are here. Six. Well, there's five, I believe, present. Well, Danny's out there in YouTube land, and I can count him as well. Um, I forgot Danny wasn't here. But no, I, I find it somewhat disingenuous for me to sit back and tell you guys about leadership. Um, you guys all had the courage to throw your hat in the arena to be the voice of 6,000 or 5,500, whatever the census report says. Um, I'm hoping we're going to grow to 6,000. Uh, but what I will say is, uh, from a historical standpoint, this town has been around for over 200 years. Um, so from uh, a student of history's perspective, uh, that tells us that for 200 years, uh, New Carlisle, the members of New Carlisle have sent their sons and daughters to go fight in every American conflict. 
They lived through the Great Depression. They lived through the Cultural Revolution. Uh, numerous uh, blizzards and bad weather um, and all types of different things that, that we should you know, honor the traditions of this community and remember that um, as leaders within the community. But what I will tell you from an advisor's perspective is I believe that we are at a pivot point in our nation's history right now. So strong le leadership could not be more paramount than what it is right now. And as the voice of the 5,500 people within this community, um, it has to be heavy on all of your guys' hearts. Um, we want to be here to help guide you and help advise you um, and be supportive throughout all of our community. Um, but I believe it's strong leadership that has got us through these hard times. And if we are heading into a storm, um, I, I, I pray for all of you uh, in, in helping us you know, get through this in the hopes that uh, we will. Uh, but at this time, I think this is more of the fun part of the conversation. Instead of me talking about leadership, I would like to hear from council um, on this value that you guys all have the chair as a leader in this community for you guys to let us know, you know what you think of strong leadership. So whoever would like to, to begin. We go. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, leadership's key. I mean, you nailed it. I mean, without, uh, you know, strong leaders, whether it's a city manager, I mean, it doesn't even have to be anyone that's elected or a city manager. It can be anyone in a, in a volunteer group at the, at the community garden, um, the parks and rec boards. I mean, you name it. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's the structure of anything, you know, community related in a city. I mean, um, not to sound silly, minus the tech talk of Facebook and, and being involved that way. With everything that was said tonight, it's like almost like you, if you if I closed out everything around this building, it's like man, it, the way you guys were all talking, it's like back in the '50s where everyone had a. You know, I start thinking about these little pretty houses where everybody talked to their neighbors, but uh, and, and that's the sad part is, is nobody talks to their neighbors anymore for the most part. I think you probably touched on it a few times, Mrs. Wright, but uh, yeah, you know, I don't know how you build that back because you know when you go to and, I'm, and again, I'm sure you guys are you know, with the, the community garden and the parks and rec or the festival or whatever boards or sporting events, whatever it may be. You, when you ask for, you know, volunteers, hey, uh, we need volunteers for this board or this event or this, well, I'm too busy. So it's like, how do you get around that as far as everyone seems to be so busy? Uh, someone who I admire a lot, Jim Bobo. I don't know how many of you know Jim Bobo. He, he always puts the ball up for uh, New Year's Eve and, He's donated money to probably every good cause in this area. Uh, he told me one time, he says, you know, if you want something done, and he didn't say literally mean, but a group or a person or whoever it may be, so if you need something truly done, ask a busy person because they are used to it. They know, they know how to manage your time. They know how to manage, uh, you know, they just, they know how to get it done because they're used to nonstop moving. And, it's, and, and you think about it, it's true. But yeah, I don't know what the what the answer is to, to bring back the involvement of, of your average citizen who who may not be comfortable coming to these types of meetings or coming to a sporting event to, to run the, the concession stand or the community garden or so on and so on. But I mean, you're right, the, the, the leadership uh, of all those events and try to bring those outside to learn how important it is. I mean, it's, it's your backbone of the entire community. So that's, I mean, in a nutshell for me. Does anybody else have any thoughts of any of the values and, or any other values that we, we haven't discussed? Um, you know, there was a, one other piece I was going to tell you guys on leadership is uh, it's, a, it's another value that's in the first line of the proposed uh, preamble, and you'll find the word liberty. Oh, yeah. So when you guys think of yourselves as city councilmen, um, you know, as a somewhat libertarian in nature person I am, the charter is essentially a restriction of liberties. I mean, it's a, it's a social contract. It's boundaries that we've put in place as a, as a body of people that say we'll operate within these parameters collectively. We all vote for this and we agree to it. But you all have the individual rights to restrict liberty of your fellow man. That's powerful. And so every decision that you're making, every single ordinance that, that passes this desk is in essence restricting someone's liberty. Now, sometimes it's warranted. We have to. 
We can't have people driving 150 miles an hour down the street. Right. Um, you guys talked a lot, you know, the last council member about, you know, snow removal and things. You know, that requires tax dollars. So people have to work. They have to pay for this. You know, we're, we're discussing the money and everything else. But, you know, there's some guy out there shoveling a ditch that you're taking a percentage of his pay to pay for the salt to put on the roads. So regardless, you know, liberty, I believe, is the forefront of, you know, we should maximize and not restrict movement unless we absolutely have to. So again, going through the dichotomy of, you know, looking at a charter review, making suggestive changes with every, you know, line of this charter, you have to think of your fellow man and their liberties that you potentially could be restricting. So is there another value that you feel, Mr. Cook, I'm gonna pick on you. You've, you've been here, I think, for a little while. Um, he just moved in five years ago. <laughs> so what are some values historically that you feel is, is relevant to this community? Well, if you go back to the probably the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, 60s, you had a great nucleus in the local <coughs> fire department. You had a group of volunteers. And normally out of that group of volunteers, you probably found people to serve on committees, to serve on council. Even some of those people became mayors. And I'll be honest, <coughs> when we let that group of people go and we became, let's say, the part paid department, we seem to have lost a lot of that volunteerism. We seem to have lost a lot of those people in joining on committees. And it seems like today we've got both man and wife working in order to make a decent living. And consequently, when they get home, probably they don't feel like coming out to a committee meeting and sitting for another two, two and a half hours, trying to solve the city's problem. They're leaving it up to some of the people that step up year after year and take the brunt of those that don't want change. We had a great activist and a gentleman many years that I don't know whether or not he really wanted to see the city grow, but I think he did about everything he could to not see us grow. <laughs> and there are still some of us that fought that person for many years in order to make this city grow, to make it where it's at. I will say this, in the past two years, we saw a lot of changes in this city. We've grown from $125 in the bank account to over six million. We've got a lot of streets done. The school is down, the water tower is <coughs> down. The pandemic we saw through that we had no layoffs. We maintained the city services. And I'll be honest with you, serving on that council in the last two years with the group that I had to serve on was one of the better years of being on council and getting things done. The administration seemed to work with council better than that in any time forward. But for some reason, again, unbeknownst to many people, we don't have that volunteers to get it back. I know Mike and his group have a lot of people that volunteer their times on the heritage of flight the ball drop at Christmas, and a few other things that stand by. Parks and Recreation, 
are picking up some of the slack. I have seen some of the things that they're planning on doing this year. We're going to pick up a few more events in that area. We brought the 4th of July fireworks back to the city, what, two years, three years? Two, three, I think three. Three years. Three, three or four years ago, I think. It's been a struggle. Yeah. Because you get two old fellows out there, 180 and 170 something, doing the work. This past year, we had a few more people chip in and help. Now that the Parks and Rec want to take this thing over, we might have a little bit better type of a situation uh, for that event. But it's going to take cooperation from everybody, not just the council. The citizens are going to have to put forth a little bit more effort in order to make this city work. So I think one of the, I mean, if you sum it up between what you've said so far and what I've said is, you know, what value? Community pride. How do you build that? I mean, because you've got people that, that, that volunteer for the things that they do, whatever it may be, and those people, you know, blood, sweat, and tears for whatever that is that they do. How do you, I mean, how do you, um, how do you, how do you build off of that? But that, I mean, that's probably. If I could interject. Yes, please. I think, uh, I believe society is built on the family. Without the family, society dies. If you look at tab four and you look at the census report, you'll see that the age is going up and our population is going down. So from a marketing standpoint, that's not good. Um, if you want more volunteers, uh, I believe it starts at the family. And as you said, it is, it's a challenge of my generation, Mr. Cook, of having dual income and fighting to just survive to be able to pay your bills. And I think in churn, you see the consequence of council where you guys are kind of doing the same thing. You're just fighting to survive to keep the lights on. You're doing what we have to do to, to survive as a community. But I think now is the time, especially with this charter, um, and again, I've told some of you guys this at, at council meetings and you know, being before and after, the success or failure completely relies on your guys' involvement um, your unity and, and pushing this out to your neighbors and friends. You guys do have some of the most powerful voices within the community and this has to go on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So we collectively have to work yeah. as, a, as a team. And, um, and I know some of this you know, may seem like somewhat rabbit trails, you know, like, okay, where are we gonna get into the weeds and the seeds of the charter? We have to understand your guys' vision of a community to know how to posture this document. Because like I said, I think this, this is, uh, there's a lot of opportunity to really market and attract families. Because I do believe the, the Mayberry that, you know, Kathy, you know, so eloquently wrote about, um, it's popular. It's, it's the next best thing. I, I, I do. I believe my friends are, you know, feel somewhat stagnant in some of these, you know, larger suburban communities because there isn't a lot of history and tradition. Nobody's from there. Everybody's just kind of migrated here and they're, and they're trying to figure it out. But I think people are drawn to this. They're drawn to the fact that nobody has to keep up with the Joneses here. We're all mm -hmm. the Joneses. And you know, I do believe it's neighbors helping neighbors like the fire truck says. But I believe it's deeper than that. I believe it's families helping families. If you think about the beginning of you know, social contracts, you had settlers that had families. And three or four families were carving out pieces of the earth, and then they collectively formed a contract together. Well, think about that. If you're an early settler, you would find like-minded people who had some shared values and you build an alliance with them. So I, I think that's why the preamble is so important because it does kind of set the tone of the city. So um, I know we haven't given you guys a lot of time to review the materials and we didn't want to get to any point of decision phase tonight. Um, but we are uh, somewhat hung up right now and knowing what direction to go with. Um, do we try to go ahead and adopt just an entirely new charter? Um, or do we work with what has already been written and, and just make tweaks and changes to make it work for our city? 
Um, and I guess that's, you know, again, without giving you guys the fair opportunity to review this 80 some page document, I think it, it wouldn't be fair to make that decision tonight. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, some of the things that we're asking, I guess, of you guys is to review these materials, to think critically and, and you know, and uh, just let us know which direction you guys would like to go in. And, and also, you know, again, I know it's kind of on the spot to just be asked, like, what's your values? And, you know, what do you stand for? What do you think the community stands for? But I'd ask you again to think critically about that. You know, what is it that, why did you come here? Like, what attracted you to this place? Um, and believe it or not, there's, there's probably other people in this room that feel the exact same way. And I think we need to spend more time talking about our values. I think it bring, it fosters unity. We have a common understanding of, of why we're here, why we live here. Um, and it also fosters trust that, you know, we all, we're a family and, you know, we can rely on people. And I think it's, it's slowly, I've tried it. Um, Jason is one of my neighbors um, and this is kind of how this started. You know, uh, me and Jason both redid a really old house, you know, on Jefferson Street. It's a monumental task to be working full time and taking care of a house that's 175 years old. I need my neighbor and my neighbor needs me. We have dug ditches together, we've cleared trees, we've cleared out alley alleys, we've cleared snow. I never knew Jason. I mean, Jason comes from a different upbringing, different area, and you know, but we're neighbors and we care about each other and we look mm -hmm. out for each other. So, um, so I guess that's, you know, again, kind of getting, you know, staying on track with the charter. Um, you know, those are, those are the principles that we are using uh, while we're going through this review. So um, we're welcome to your guys' feedback. Uh, of, if you'd like us to go, if we're getting too philosophical, um, you know, please let us know. Uh, we are a deep thinking group, and I think, you know, in a, I, I'm proud of this committee. I think this is an example, you know, Mr. Cook, that you can have a collective body within New Carlisle of three different generations. Uh, with various education and family dynamics that can collectively come together as a group and, and put together something like this. Well, I can say <clears throat> this, that in seeing the group that you've got together on this chart review, it has been my, I guess the word is luck, that I've been on several of these charter review committees. <laughs> I think Pat was on Yeah, we were on the there were times that we only had two, three people. We had to go out and drag people in. I think this year you've, you've done what I'm seeing so far. is a great opportunity to possibly work into this charter. Some of the changes that have been long overdue. Mm -hmm. And my problem, or your problem, is going to be selling this to the public. That has always been the problem in the past, whether or not the public has fully understood what the Charter Review Committee is trying to do in order to make this a better city, a better charter to work under, and to work with. But you've got an uphill struggle. Yeah, I mean, that's always the trick. I mean, because, you know, a lot of times people go to the polls, they see charter, they have no idea what it means, what it's about, and they get scared, and they either don't vote or they vote no on it. Yeah. I mean, maybe they should vote no, depending on what they think is right and wrong, but it's usually just an instant no or no vote. So, yeah, it's, I mean, we've talked about that before, that, you know, it's it's something that we'll all have to get behind once it's finished and, and really push it hard, whether it's signage or, you know, you know, I know now Randy can put the uh, the newsletters in the in the uh, water statements and stuff. We can use that as a, an advantage. Social media is a lot bigger than what it was the last time this was done. So um. it's one of the large parts of our discussion. So we started going through the city charter and redlining it. We put in suggested language, and the the huge common goal that we came across was trying to simplify, keep the same values within the charter, but simplify the language for those who were interested enough right. in the limited few that it went out to read it, they truly understood it because we have a very diverse 
population. So we wanted to make sure everyone understood it. And about 30% of the way, 40% of the way through, Pat found the model city charter, which if you look at it, and you'll take time to go home, the language comparison between the model city charter and what we have standing today is very, very similar. The difference is they make a point to have an explanation paragraph underneath saying, not, here's what it says with all the codes and all the ordinances, right. but this is what it means to you, everyday citizen. And I think that's valuable. Yeah. Um, and a simple language. Absolutely. And it's just one of those things. But yes, getting people to care and sharing it, it's, it's up to everyone in this room. And Danny, because he's not here. He doesn't get a hall pass. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, think about it. I see, I see you at the pool. I see you at every event. I see you at every political event I have ever been to from everybody who's there. I see you around town taking pictures. You know, I see everyone somewhere. And none of us, I can promise you, in this room are as afraid to talk to anybody, so it's up to us to kind of share it out. Put it on your Facebook. Yep. Put it on social media. Talk to your friends. Go to Christmas. Well, hopefully sooner than Christmas, but go to Easter and talk about it. It's, it's still cold out. But you can. I would much rather have, I mean, how many people in the history have actually voted on charter a lot of times i see people skip them all together right. so if only 300 people are voting and we have an opportunity to talk to 200 of them yeah. we're okay yeah but we got to do it but first before we do that i want you all to go home and look at the comparison between what we have today and what we're recommending in the model city charter and see if it's worth the change and if it is that doesn't mean our work is done we would still add in personalizations to New Carlisle. There's still a lot of work, ordinances, and everything that means something to us still has to go into that to make it ours. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to bring something up real quick. Um, so the first week I moved here, um, I called Randy um, because I had a notice on my front door. So I didn't realize there was a charter, first of all. <laughs> and didn't understand how the charter worked because I've always lived out in the country. Hey, if you want to put a pole barn here, mm -hmm. you know, get with Clark County, exactly. pay the 30 bucks, build it. Yeah. So um, I had a good chat with Randy. Um, I looked over the charter, like Bill says. Um, so some of the things may, did, may need to be changed. Well, it was hard enough making out what I needed to look at but I have to scroll through this because I'm living here, right? And honestly, I, that's one of the biggest things um, is clarifying and putting into layman's terms, what is this? Um, what is it telling me I can or can't do? And what does it mean to me or my neighbor, right? So um, it was hard to understand. And I don't have a law degree, uh, but um, I'm just a normal citizen. <laughs> Every day, uh, you know, person. So, um, so yeah. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I, I agreed. I said, "Hey, I mean, somebody's got to do it." Yes, I'll help mm -hmm. um, because I ran into that issue. So, if somebody's going to vote yes or no for this, let's explain a little bit or put into layman's terms. Um, 2022. What, what this code or ordinance or preamble uh, means. And it's ours, right? So let's, that's our job. So let's do it and, you know, and we'll get through it. So it's gonna take some work, but I think we can do it. Hope your notice wasn't too uh, inflammatory. What, oh. <laughs> your notice? <laughs> no. uh, well, you know, um, Don mentioned the values, and the values are very important. But I also think that the citizens care, and, and they, they're concerned with the future and the vision. They, they, they want to have some insights into, okay, we've got $6 million in the bank. What, what's going to happen in our city with $6 million? That's a vision. What's the vision? And so dialogue for a vision can't, can't happen overnight, just like dialogue for a charter can't happen. But I think um, the more you dialogue with people, the more you um, get to know your neighbors, um, you know, the, the better chance you have of building relationship and trust. And that's what it takes to really pass something with the voters, is trust. I think citizens, in some respects, have had trust issues with leadership. 
So um, I used to always tell, I used to always tell, used to always tell my boys, you know, if you break trust with me or with somebody else, a family member or somebody else, I said, don't expect, you know, it's going to just come back. You have to work at it. And so we're willing to help work on this issue because we feel passionate about the city um, and the future. And I want the city to be successful. Uh, the first, um, when I bought my house in town uh, on, on Richard Court, it was um, 1991, and um, I was a single mom with three kids. And um, unfortunately, my mother died very suddenly, and um, I was supposed to be moving into this new house. Well, I had to go to Boston for her funeral, and we all, as a family, we all drove back from you know New England to Ohio, and um, when I got back, uh, people had packed my house up on um, Rachel Court up there out of the city, and then um, neighbors on Richard Court had been cutting my grass, and they didn't know me. But that's the kind of city New Carlisle can be again. It's just getting to know one neighbor at a time. John and I take um, soup to a neighbor just right next door to us, and, and we are really close to her. And she's moving, unfortunately. But um, you know, it, it just takes one person to help, like Don did with um, Jason, and like this city I, uh, story I told you about, you know, moving here for to <coughs> So it's possible. But I just think we all want to have a vision of the future for this city that we love and its values and vision together that'll move us forward. Well said. I. I don't want to ramble, but we've had a lot of discussions offline, and I have a couple thoughts that I wanted to share, and it really you triggered me, Mike, when you said, you know, how do we get people to get involved? And Mr. Cook, the same, same thing. And so my, my frame of reference is about leadership, and it's about business, so I'm sorry, that's, I'm sell chicken for a living, you know, so I'm in business. We just happen to sell chicken, but we're really in the people business, mm -hmm. okay? And that is, so that's the frame of reference, okay? And I'm gonna get at the end of this to a competitor that I have to talk about every day, but the, the reason vision is so important, I'll give you the quote, the antidote to division, division, is vision. Amen. And we've had a lot of division in this city, and it's been at this table. Mm -hmm. City council has been divided, and we need to change that. And I think the opportunity that we have in this charter is to identify the things, we have way more things in common than we do things we differ on. And that's what shared value speaks to. Okay, so the shared values get to what's meaningful to, why did I choose to live in the city? I could have bought a lot a mile, or a half mile outside of town, you know? Why would I choose to live inside the city? Why would you come back to this city? The shared values. Why do we want to come here? Because we see reasons that this is a great place to live, to work, and to play. And those three words are part of, and I'm gonna use marketing, they're part of the marketing campaign that other cities who are trying to do the same thing are doing today. And it's Springfield and it's Bell Fountain. I use those two examples because I operate businesses in those towns and I see it. And I think we can do the same thing. Um, the shared values speaks to our culture. And culture is important. What, what do we have in common? The culture. When you spoke about the heart of the volunteers, that's, that's just, that's who you are as a person. I help my neighbor, you know, and it's happening here today in my neighborhood. Um, my neighbor down the street had his kids come out and shovel my driveway. And it's like, dang, I, I don't see that happening a lot, but it happens on my street. <laughs> no, it's, I wonder how many here were affected by their neighbors or helped by their yeah. neighbors at this last snow event. Yeah. I say there was a handful of people that were posting there that someone are quite helped a them few out. People that were, oh, I mean, we're not a negative a town as I think some of us think we are, and I don't think it's there. I think we're mm -hmm. still the great bunch of people that we always were. 
And I just think that the us versus them for me is where I see the divide. That really is it. Everything I hear, and it's not about you guys. It's not personal right now about you guys, because this is really the best functioning council in a really long time. Very good. Yep. But anyways, in general, in this 50 years, it's that us versus them. No, I can't have a shit. Maybe tear my fence down. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, this kind of stuff happens, and there's no explanation. There's no like, nope, can't have it. Go away. You know, and I mean, you don't say that. I know. But it feels that way mm -hmm. to people. It feels yeah. to their heart that That's way. Serious. And then when you want to join a group, you're like, I ain't helping them. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's that, I don't know. I, I can't put it towards. I'm a writer, I'm not a talker. Let me finish the the thought and then I'll shut up oh, because I'm sorry. The, the the next and it ain't no problem because I ramble and but my problem is I'm on the older side of this generational thing than I used to be okay and I've had to learn how to figure out how to motivate that next generation and I work with them every day and you know I wear a logo for my brand on my chest and those kids that work here couldn't care less about my brand mm -hmm. that I've worked at for mm -hmm. 50 years. They couldn't care less. But if I tell them that we're taking care of customers, we're serving customers, we have a cause that they can get behind. Um, and they don't care about a brand, they care about a cause. The cause here is our city. Okay, now let, just let me give you the, the brand I have to talk about every day, and it's Chick-fil-A. Okay. That's your nemesis? I had no idea. They are, they're, not even a, they're not even a head to head competitor, but people talk about Chick fil A for one reason their service, their culture. And you know, they pay the same as we do, but it's culture. And, and people go, oh, they're closed on Sundays. And, and I, I go, yeah, we kick our butts on Sundays. We're busy on Sundays. <laughs> but I'm in more churches on Sunday than, than I could shake a stick at. It's not a, it's not a religious thing. It's a culture. You know, their people care about what they do because they train them. We have an opportunity in our city mm -hmm. to identify the cultural things that matter to us. And why does unity matter? Why does vision matter? because we can speak with one voice here as a council. And, it, and it's, Mr. Cook, it's not you're gonna have an uphill battle, we are gonna have an uphill battle. We have to have one voice. And I think the opportunity to make the simplified language and an explanation to the average citizen what this section means, it's different. And let us do the work to make sure that we haven't missed anything in the existing charter and make sure that all the uh, all the things are in there because we we've already gone through 40 percent of it we weren't that we're pretty close to done and we said man this is a way better model than what we have let us start over finish that work present you with a charter that and our hope is that you guys can be 100 percent behind it and we as a as a team, as a city, can get behind it. And, you know, if there's 300 votes, we don't need 200, we need 151, right? Ooh, I like your attitude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is not that hard, okay? It's impossible if we have division. So. I think there are a lot of people that care about their city. Oh, oh yeah. Um, several years ago, I was still running newspapers, Peggy and I, got organized a Meet the Candidates night. I think the candidates were Becky, straight, Becky, and Amy, Amy Hopkins. This place was packed. It was standing room only. People just wanted to hear from the two people who were running for city council. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it is going to be a lot of work getting people to understand what the charter is what we're doing, but uh, I think it can be done. We appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Basically, how this last 15, 20 minutes has gone is how our meetings go, right? So we'll get to a point, 
and we really have to analyze it and and get behind it or say no we need to move on we don't believe in that part so this is how our meetings go at you know every thursday and um like you said when we came across that model charter we were <laughs> like um wow <laughs> so we hit gold i do like the commentary because even now member of city council i'll be looking through ordinances just to see what we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. And I have to go through and wait, what did I just read? Yeah. I'm yes. Do this again. Oh, yeah. You're right. I have a thesaurus beside me. Mm -hmm. Imagine yeah. the rub getting 50% through this thing and finding a better document and be like, well, now what? Right. <laughs> like, it was really. So this is why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is really. Yeah. It, Please, sir. I, does anybody know why that the language was that way before? I mean, hard to understand. Is it a legal thing? Like it well, has to be worded that way, and, and man, I or is it a or is it just a I historical would, I, I thing I that, that everybody talked that way all the time then, and, <laughs> and now we just don't understand. You don't talk that way. Bill, yeah. Bill, Bill, Bill wrote it. Okay, there we go. All right. <laughs> Bill wrote it. Yeah. A lot of it was no. A lot, a lot yeah. of what you are seeing in the present chart. Mm -hmm. And I think that back then we probably went over it just like you're going to go over it page by page by page section. There were copies of cities' charters much like our own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cities yeah. of same size, same dollar amounts, but from all over the United States. We went through those, and consequently, a lot of times there were things in those charters that came back to ours and were a little better done. It was a copy and paste. Mm -hmm. That was the whole reason for it, rather than go in and try and rewrite. One of the things that, I'll be honest with you, that I hated was the fact that we are individuals. We are not attorneys. There should have been an attorney on all of those charter reviews that had the right to say, you can do this, you can do that. Mm -hmm. When you write that charter and you go against the Ohio Revised Code, your rules of counsel and a few other things, you're putting yourself in a little bit of a jeopardy. You shoot that charter over to the lawyer after it's all done, they may knock out half of it, and you're right back to square one. I got a comment, though, on that, because Bill, um, I suspect, I'm, I'm guessing, this is a conjecture, that the, at least the good news is that we in New Carolina have the same model charter, the same charter type that the National Civic League has been recommending for over 100 years, which is council manager right. type. They have been recommending this type, which is what we have right. for 100 right. years. So when people started putting the charts together, they could have even had a copy of the 1975 recommended model city charter, but you know, they've updated this about every 10 years. And it, unfortunately, it had been close to 20 years since they had updated it. And it was serendipitous that we found this. It just speaks to the issues, I think, of today. But at the same time, we want to make sure that the language is clear and understandable. So I'm not going to conjecture as to why that language was. It could have been the best template that was available. They could have used the 1975 version of this model city charter because it's been recommended to have council manager for over 100 years. And the vast majority of cities in this country have the same kind of format that we do, the same um, structure. Um, so I, I guess the one other thing that I thought was important to, to, to leave on the table tonight is we've talked about values, we've talked about vision, and I think in some of the comments that people made, um, it's the excitement. It's it's the it's 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 the hopes for the future that I think this charter can encapsulate, and and then give the citizens a vector for oh, I can get involved in that, or I, I like that, or I want to be part of that, you know. And um, 
you know, we can broadcast positivism from some of the, char the council meetings, or we can broadcast negative stuff. And I have to be honest, I've seen some really negative stuff in the last four months on some of the broadcasts. And then I'm thinking, well, who would ever want to move here? So we got to have a good news story. we got to tell people that we're moving forward. We're a little town, but we're a great place to live and a great place to have a business and raise your kids and your grandkids. Be excited about it. I, I'm hoping that we can deliver you that document and that you can get behind it and use it as a tool to change the perception here. And I think that's that's kind of the sp maybe we can be the spark, you know, use this. We didn't invent it. We just happened to find it a little bit later than we wish we would have. But uh, uh, it wasn't posted till December fifteenth. So yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so I mean, we, we will start over again and make sure that everything's in it that we believe needs to be in it. And we certainly will have to make sure if if you want us to go get an attorney, you know, to, to look at it so that we can avoid that trap of finding out that, oh, this is, doesn't meet Ohio Revised Code, we can, we can. Well, I mean, the charter itself actually points out the few areas, because they have a team of 21 of the best experts from across the country, lawyers and everybody else, who are recommending this language, uh, the National Civic League. So it's not like it's put together with and we're in great danger of violating the Ohio, but there are a couple places where they do say, now check your state um, statutes on this area just to make sure. Right, but we talked that's about not it every, That's not every area by any stretch. There are flags sure. in there for us to do that work and we'll, we'll make sure that it plays in Ohio, you know. Uh, I'm sure that whatever you present to council, Randy will want to run it through Jake first. Oh, sure. oh yeah, 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 we have to. But, you, I would too. Yeah. But but I think also in, in the the charter you guys are working on or the members are working on someplace in there um, I think it's in the current charter I don't know where at offhand but there's a disclaimer in there that if any part of it is not according to state law that it would be deemed unenforceable because if it would be taken to court for whatever reason the court would deem that section, not the entire thing, but That's that section, point. that section. So if that disclaimer was in there, I, I think the city, the council, and, and, and you guys, uh, your committee, I'll get the right word in a minute, uh, I think it would cover everything that we need to, to have in it, like, and also, like uh, uh, the vice mayor said, the city of Councilor, Councilor will be looking at this because Randy wouldn't even present it to us until he had went through it, I believe. Don't you, don't you think, Mr. Mayor? I, I would lay money on it. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I would too. Uh, you know, uh, something was said earlier, and I don't remember the, mm. the exact <laughs> words, but they was talking about leadership. I understand. And the leadership is is council obviously because we have the have the final say pretty much on a lot of things but it's also the the city manager his his administration and stuff you know uh okay my mind just went i forgot where i was going with that uh, it'll come back to me i'm sure uh the uh but i think as far as council at least i i like to think this I think council as a whole and individually, I think we do what we believe is best for the city. Mm -hmm. I know with, you know, with every vote that I make, I look at, and I read all this stuff before I ever come to council meetings. I pretty much know how I'm going to vote on ordinances before I ever get here, unless somebody says something and I go, oh, I didn't think of that. And it might or might not change my mind. But every vote I pass, and I believe the rest of council does this, they do it. If it doesn't benefit the citizens, then why should we do it? And I, I look at that. You know, uh, I know that the money that we have, the $6 million we have, is not our money. It's not council's money. It's not the city's money. It's the taxpayer's money. Right. And we are stewards of that money, 
And that's part of our leadership role as council members. At least I believe that. So I don't vote, you know, uh, I guess the word would be fri frivolous. See, well, I can't even pronounce it. So you all know what I'm talking about. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> because everything we vote on costs money at some point. Mm -hmm. You know, if we can save money, I'm all about saving money if we can. If we can cut something, if we can cut ten, twenty thousand dollars off of something, I'm all for it. You know, we, we and I like to believe the rest of council is like that also. You know, uh, we are a small town with 5,500 people. The I could talk all night on the tax structure in the town. Uh, I don't think it's fair. You know, it's all the working people is supporting this town. You know, the everybody supports something through the city with their tax, you know, their property taxes. But it's the working man that gets gets busted with all of the income taxes or, or things like that. It all comes off of working pay, not retirement pay. And I'm not saying that because some of the retirees, they can't afford anymore. They they're, they have to decide now between the meds or food, you know? So we, we as a council have to take a lot in, I think, at least I do, because uh, I can't speak for council. I don't know what they think, you know? I'm not in their heads. You know, uh, we have to take a lot of that into consideration. I would love to grow this city, bring younger generations into this city, and with the kids around, that would make it more of a, the old community like I grew up in. You know, uh, I think it was Mrs. Kraybacher that said, if she did something wrong, her mom and dad know it might have been. Kathy. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, Mrs. Wright. Uh, I know it was one of you two. You know, by the time you get home, your parents already know what you did and you're in trouble. You know, when I was a kid, if our neighbors seen us doing something we shouldn't have been doing, not only did they pop our rear ends, our parents did when we got home, and, and they already knew it the time we got there. Yep. They knew every move we made, and, and kids don't realize that, but they did. And it was because of the community. It was the people that knew the kids. I would like to see that in this town. Will it happen? I would like to think it would, but is it going to happen overnight? Absolutely not. No, no. So uh, I'll quit talking. It's just, you know, I mean... I just wanted to kind of get that out there. I think that's what our leadership role as council, I think that's what it's thing about. that I'd like to say, too. Instead of waiting for us to get the charter all together, I think it would be a good idea if council could start talking about it now. I mean, I know not a million people watch the video, but at least some do. And it'd be like, we're getting really excited about this charter, getting together. You know, just little words here and there. Words are what... We'll Get them familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. Start talking about it, saying, hey, we're looking to maybe change whatever. I don't know. Pick something. Yeah. Pick something you like. <laughs> you know, and, and just tell the people that little thing. Yeah, we're going to take that word out of there and, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, start now. And then also, when you do talk to folks, try to say something. Like I was talking about the swing set. We got a new swing set out here. There was no picture. There was no... Is it good for handicapped kids? There was no excitement. There was no excitement. There, I didn't even know about it. And gosh, I'm like the nosiest person in town. <laughs> we are everywhere. And I'm a golf cart. You know, we're everywhere. I didn't even know about it. It's like, wow, another big secret. You guys could have been sucking in that love from that secret, you know? And it's important. That's how you build that relationship with our people. Positive. You gotta be like, man, we got this new thing and it's awesome and you know, come on, check it out. I don't know if it was on it was in the newspaper. I do remember. I think you were there too. They did I, do a ribbon. Yes. They did do a big yes. ribbon we cutting did. ceremony. Yes. I don't know if it was on social media. What newspaper? What? Springfield? I think so. Oh, yeah. Was it yours too? I didn't see it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, like I said, I don't know if it was on social media, yeah. but I know the paper was there. So have a council. First one down the slide wins, right? <laughs> uh, we're, we're too fun? tall. Well, if I could circle back just real quick, yeah, you guys brought up some, you know, like the legality of change in the charter. Like, great question. Well, go to tab two, page 65 of the model charter. 
Check that. Where are we going? Our charter doesn't have this. So we'll go to the model charter, tab two, page 65, section 9.01. That is nice. <laughs> it's actually set up very good. You did a good job. You know, Draw your eyes down to kind of the middle of the page and you'll see city attorney. And then you can broadly read around that. Where are you reading at? Yeah. So middle, middle of the page. It must be submitted to the clerk in oh. advance of a petition and reviewed by the city attorney. Our charter doesn't say that. The model charter does. Mm -hmm. So asked and answered. The model charter just answers a lot of questions our current charter doesn't. Yeah. And, 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 and again, I know it's, it's unfair to you guys. We've had, we had the entire holidays and the weeks leading up to this to really read this thing. And there's like 12 pages before the charter even starts that just gives fundamentals of what local governing is, why it matters, why a charter matters. What so are the major changes that were recommended because of what is happening in our nation, for example? People don't trust government. And, and at the present time, addressing bitter partisanship, polarization, and declining level of public confidence in powerful institutions requires a high level of adaptiveness and innovation. And that's, I think, what we're also sharing with you guys. You can adapt and you can be innovative and regain some of that trust because citizens don't trust right now. Well, the charter is an answer. I mean, we hear you. We hear you, and we hear your frustrations, we hear the grumbles and rumblings, we read the Facebook threads, we understand that you know, there, there is some frustration, and it's, it's noted, and it's understandable. Mm -hmm. But you know, what this charter does is it maximizes freedom, and it also puts in boundaries of government. Right. So why does that matter? Well, I go out and try to talk to as many people in New Carlisle as I possibly can. And the two things that people come to me of that they care about is low taxes and max freedom. Well, <clears throat> how do you do that? Well, you maximize liberties, so you think very critically about your ordinances. And number two, we already have a small government, and you have a very valid point about you know the working class right now is, is flipping a, a large portion of the bill. Um, you know, in, in trying to get to equity and fairness. Well, the charter talks about that. So I, I just think it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great first step of really fostering change. But what I'll tell you and what I hope is of this commission is as soon as we get this done successfully and, and have it passed on the ballot, I'd like to move into our ordinances next and then our comp plan. But I have to get the charter done first because this is the spine of the city. Everything is connected to this. So, um, you know, and I guess that's, you know, understanding the importance will help the sale or sell of, of the document. And I think so, what you had didn't mention, Don, what we've talked about as a group is we would be part and parcel of having and hosting some meetings with the public, you know, once a week, come and join us at Leeds and maybe Scott will throw in a few meals, I don't know, but you know, <laughs> let's, let's talk about it. Everybody keeps bringing that up. Now that is something I would run by the city attorney. They're coming for the free food, right, Scott? One thing I would like to point out, I think we are, and I, I hope I'm saying the same thing. If I'm not, be sure to correct me, especially on camera. My husband will never forget it. I don't think we're on camera. Um, we are truly looking for guidance right now. We're looking at the model city charter and what we have already redlined, which is in the binder. Take a couple weeks, all of you, to kind of absorb it, what the model city charter is, what it sounds like, what it reads like, and look at some of the red line suggestions that we've made and come back and let us know, say, hey, this really means something to us. We would stand behind the model city charter. Or if it really, if you do not like it at all, let us know. So then we know what, what direction to invest our energy in, how we can best help the city. We just need to know. But I don't know if, I don't know if anybody wants to commit to a date, but I could maybe like February 28th, something, two and a half weeks, <laughs> off the top of my head, not being pushy. Can, can we, can so, we get it next time? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, a, Ryan's um, specialty is can, keeping can, us can we get next right. month? Yeah. Time management. I'm, hey, I'm open for suggestions. I'm just, I'm a big fan of putting a date are, out there and we can edit it. That. Well, what, we I have a is, that. what I was going to say is since since Emily's gone, mm -hmm. I would, I, you know, we don't have our clerk here, so I'm going to have to do the role. I'd prefer That's not. That's fine. I'd prefer not to do any other action during the well because we would have to break rules. Well, no, that's we have, fine. Would we have to break rules to set a date for another? We don't. Meeting? We don't have a rule. 
I mean, we don't we don't have an agenda tonight. We're here discussing. That's what I'm saying. There's nothing. If, if, if we can't vote on anything. No, we're just having a conversation. My 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 uh, opinion on the on that would be they would not all of them, but some uh, a representative from the from the commission or two or three, however once would come to council and ask us at an open meeting about a date and then have dates in mind. Right. Uh, personally, I'm booked the rest of this month. I mean, I, I've got like two days of <laughs> the uh, and the 28th. We have a council meeting uh, March 2nd. I looked at, real quick. I don't have anything on March 2nd, but I think that would be the the proper way to do it for somebody to come to our council meeting and say, hey, you know, uh, we all met. We'd like to meet again. Uh, can we set a date and then? At the meeting, we can council can talk about it and then vote on on a date or you know accept the date whatever they have like we did the last time. Yeah. You guys may not even need to show up if you want to email me, whichever way you guys. Prefer. I can talk with Mr. Bridge as well. I, I, yeah, kind of the way I did it the last time where right. I came in, spoke at the podium, and had a list of dates. And we yeah. Well, I believe out. Mrs. Craybach came with you. Yes. Yes. Uh, she probably won't come this time. Uh, she's going she's someplace gonna warm, I hear. <laughs> and that's kind of what we were thinking. I mean, the community is going to have to vote on this at the end of the day anyway. Right. We're just looking for the consensus mm -hmm. from council of which do you think is going to be more beneficial. Yeah. So we're going to have to sell either one back to our community to get them to mm -hmm. show up at the polls. So we just need a pulse on what means more to you guys, which one you think is going to. It's going to take a lot of work on our part to get the community to approve a 65 page document. Yeah, something yeah. the the because the uh, the ballot is not going to have 65 pages on it. You know, it's just going to be a highlight, and it's going to be a paragraph about that long in print you can't read with a magnifying glass, sir. I think the ballot will say. Does I don't want to say that. Does the voter approve the changes made to? the Nuclear Charter as right. per the Charter Review Committee. Right. It'll be a yes or no. Yeah. Okay. It would not be any. Right. Yeah, it won't be, it won't be any language in there. Explanation. And, and the city's job and the commission's job and the council's job mm -hmm. will be to educate, educate public, publicize it, get it on Facebook, get it, uh, get a copy of what we want to vote on on the city website. Again, council have to mention almost at every meeting coming, you know, to to come up with that. Yeah. I mean, we we can't go through 65 or 80 pages, yeah. whatever it is, at council meetings. You know, people's going to have to go and get a copy of it, or they're going to have to read it online. And the and, and the initiative's going to be on them really to if they're interested in what's happening in the city, they got to take the time to read to look at it and read it and try to understand it. And if they don't, reach out to council members, come to a council meeting, reach out to the commission. You know, uh, I don't know if your, your, all your phone numbers are published or not, I doubt it, but they can go to Randy. Randy can turn them on to Don, and Don knows all your guys' information. To help with some of that, we do all of our work out on a Google Shared Drive, and we have mm -hmm. PDF copies of all of these that can be shared. And however, mm -hmm. okay. you want to okay. phone, However, uh, text message, Facebook, YouTube. We would like to maximize transparency. Yeah. If if you if you have the ability to do it, I don't, I'm not crazy about reading stuff on Texas, but an email campaign, if you have that ability, blast it out to everybody's email account. Please don't send it to all 15 of mine, please. I, I just need a copy. <laughs> and that's where language language is going to be crucial. Yeah. Absolutely. If you're going to ask people to read it, it can't be. Mm -hmm. It can't be in legal terminology. Mm -mm. That's why the commentary is a good idea. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I was going to the, the scope of our charge is to revise the charter and present it to you. But I don't think any of us believe we're stopping there. I think if we're going to invest this time, we want to help you uh, to bring it to a vote. So I'd, I'd say you can count us in however that. I can't speak for everybody, but I'm, I'm saying that this is going to be a community effort. And, you know, so the, the marketing side of this, that's kind of one of my day jobs. So I have ideas about how to execute a campaign, and I think we can help there. 
So, and I know that there's others here that can, can do the same thing. So, I'm not worried about that part of it, but what we're talking about is foundation first, not formation, you know, uh, strategy and tactics. Let, let's, let's get this thing together so that we can run a campaign and get the word out properly. I'm sorry, Jim. go ahead. No, I guess I'm, I might be the, the naive silver lining one, but I am, I, I, I think it would, it depends on how you sell it, but if you sell it in terms of, it's, it's in much more readable terms, it maximizes freedom and it puts boundaries on government, I think especially right now in today's culture, those are buzzwords that people want to hear, especially from their community leaders. Uh, and secondly, I, I've never really studied too much into the psyche of voting, uh, but I don't think people are inept to just vote no on something they don't know anything about. I think they're more inept to just avoid it. So with that, the more people you tell, and you know, if the sales tactics are successful, if people really believe in the document, um, you know, I, I think you're gonna get a lot more yeses than no's. Uh, and then I think you're going to get a lot of people that just don't do anything because, you know, like everyone said, everyone's busy. Do, who has the time to read a 65-page right. document? Uh, but, you know, if you get out and reach 500 people within the community, right. it's, enough, it's enough for change. Or if at council, you give citizens a chance to go to the microphone and say, hey, Don, I mean, a council, I love that draft of the charter. I mean, give this, this, somebody from the school to go, uh, NGOs, businessmen to go up and women to go up. I mean, people... Trust other people than just the people that are yeah. sitting at the table here. But their word carries a lot of mm -hmm. weight. And, and to follow up with what Mrs. Krabacher said, the, the st stigma in the country right now, they don't trust, the council, nobody trusts us. Nobody. Because they consider us government and we're evil. And we, all we want is their money and tell them what they can and can't do. I honestly don't believe our council currently has that thought or feeling that we want to control people's lives. Mm -hmm. I, think, uh, I think most of us, I could be wrong, like I said, I'm not in their heads. I, for one, would prefer smaller government and get them out of our lives like, like it was meant to be, you know, 100 years, 200 years ago. You know, yeah. I agree with you on that, but I know when people started hearing that we had $6 million in the bank and then they didn't clear the streets, I think they are sending a different message. They didn't do what the streets? When there's $6 million yeah. in the bank, but we don't have money to clear the streets, you're still hearing, the people are hearing a different message. So when you do say $6 million in the bank, which is a wonderful thing, you know, we need to keep a million in, our, you know, for emergencies. This is what we're planning to do with, I think Pat mentioned this. What are, what are the plans for the six million? You need to be telling people, this is what we're thinking. You know, this is why, you know, just like a parent would tell a kid, I know you want a Barbie dream house, but, you know, we want to have turkey for Thanksgiving dinner. You know, I mean, it's that kind of thing. Well, inside of hand. I think six yeah. million is the budget. Is the budget. That's the budget. That's the budget. Yeah. Yeah. See, and that's, that's where and clarity. That's, that's what, yeah. That's mm -hmm. where clarity comes in because people, I've already heard it. Yeah. Six million dollars. I wish we had six million in yeah. yeah. But the standpoint of the fact of it is, the average citizen does not understand that that six million in that bank, and we've got 50 checking accounts, you can't move money yeah. right, left, give it to this account or that account. It's got to be designated. Yeah. And you've got to be careful of what you do and, with that money. It, and, and, and to follow up with what Mr. Cook said, every, every department is like a little company within inside the city. They have their own checkbook, they have their own income, they have their own expenses. So, and, and our budget is six million, like uh, the mayor said. I think we actually have just a little over two million dollars but you know, two million dollars is still a lot of money it, for it, most it, of the people in our well, town. For most people, but for the city, I mean, okay, we can we could kill two million dollars if something happened over at the right. over at the waterworks, if 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 a major pipeline broke, right, and or just the whole street line collapsed. 
it could take that whole $2 million to fix it, and we're back to zero. And now, now we're looking at Frisco Watch. I mean, I think you know, it, it just snowballs. Yeah, I think and, a lot of people do understand that. But I think there's way more people who hear $6 million and think totally differently yeah. on that. And, and I have I have had some conversation with people that they've said, mm -hmm. "Hey, we got six million dollars." I go, "Wow, we do where?" Mm -hmm. And they look at me like, "Well, you're on council." I, yeah, I've only been there for a month, but we don't have six million dollars. Mm -hmm. We have a six million dollar budget. That means you know we need six million dollars to do everything that we plan on doing, and we only have two million of it. Mm -hmm. And that two million can go away in the blink of a eye if we have a major catastrophe, such no, as no sewer lines or, no. you know, you know the water department over yeah, here or something. You, you know, just said right there, that says a lot. Well, so I mean, what'd you say? He said, if we have no income, that two million million would last us four months. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. See, that's yeah. the kind of if information. But that's, the yeah, that citizens. goes back to the, the value of public engagement. Yeah. It is your responsibility to relay that information. One thing, the way I describe it is there's, you know, I'm a family guy. There's two types of families, and everybody wants to go to Disney World. There's the family who goes on the Visa card and, and puts it all on credit, and then there's the family that cuts things, you know, doesn't go to McDonald's, you know, every other day, and, and saves the money slowly and goes to Disney, you know, <laughs> in the positive. Um, we are the latter part of that community. And I think explaining it that way to people that, you know, there is plenty of communities out there that are so in deep debt. Yeah. They may have nice shiny things and everything's crystal clear, um, but survivability, sustainability, I'm not, we've been around for over 200 years. I mean, that's significant. And yeah, we haven't developed as much as maybe some would want, but I would again spin that and say, I can tell you so many communities in the Miami Valley that are overdeveloped, that were New Carlisle, mm -hmm. and okay. now they are in major trouble and everybody is leaving from there, trying this you know, gender finding thing and you know, revitalize. We haven't had to do that. You know, so I, again, I do think it is you know, how you look at it and how you deliver it to the people. And, and I have to say, having watched the council meeting, I have heard that $6 million figure and so I think the messaging that you guys have when you're sharing, you, you guys might need to just explain that a little bit because I'm not the only one that thought it was six million dollars. Mm -hmm. So I know. Yeah, it, it's, it's, so it's, the message that you put out with your words may not convey what you think it's conveying. If people think you've got six million dollars in the bank and now you're not talking about it or you're even saying it's not there, right. you know, that's a trust issue. Um, Understanding issue and a trust issue. No, good point, good point. Well, uh, do you want to hear that I would have to Let's remember is the fact that sometimes there are things that have been done in the past that have not been accounted for. And I think one of the big projects was the recent water tower debacle, which, and I don't remember the cost, do you, Bill? What tower are you talking about? Tower on Lake. Yeah, was, that was. I think it was half a million. I'm not sure. Well, it was. It was 115,000. I think the figure was a year. It was more than that. I well, I mean, but that, each no, year. That was a year yeah. for maintenance and and to keep it in compliance with EPA and all them other things and maintenance of the tower. And it was a. I think it was a five-year contract. Five years, five years. And it was 115,000 every year. Well, when we first started that, did that, we borrowed $115,000, not we, but the water department, yeah, borrowed it from the city coffers, the general fund, $115,000. It might have been more than that, I forget, at, at, at the first, the it, first it payment. It was around there. It was either that or 125, but I'm thinking it was 115. So we had to borrow that to pay for it because the city water department didn't have the money to do it. That's, that's what prompted the water increases, the sewer increases that everybody complained about, but we had to do that. I mean, we didn't have a choice. Some things we don't have a choice in. We have to make them hard decisions. And if you want clean, fresh water, we have to, yeah, we have to do that. But. In the process, the next year we had to pay another one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars 
But also that next year we had to pay, I think it was like $25,000 back to the city general fund from the water department. And it, it, was, it was a trick. I mean, I'm not even sure if, if we even borrowed more money from the water department because I don't, quite honestly, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But I think now it, it is, uh, I've got what, one more year on that contract, I think? It's, I think it was two? Was it it I, might be two. Was it a five-year contract? I think or, it was a five-year. That'd be two, three. Well, it should, it should be about the last year. Next year, I think, is the last year of it. If, it could I forget when we did it? it? Well, you had not only that, you had the Twin Kirks Fund. Yeah, yeah. and that was, a, that was a debacle right there because somebody did not make the payment. So, well, I, I wasn't here then, so I, I, I'm not going to comment on that. But, we, but the payment for Twin Creeks wasn't made in one year because, yeah. and then the second year we had to make a double payment. Well, you want to talk about a hit to the budget, that took a hit to the budget, and that's when we wound up with, what was it, Mike Hunter 95 out in the general fund, and that in the newspaper on the front page is what brought me to my first council meeting. And people that was on council at that time remembers I laid into them over it. I could not believe a town this size had a hundred and seventy-five dollars. I think it was one hundred and seventy-five bucks. Twenty-five. One hundred and twenty-five. Thank you. I was thinking that. But I thought, man, that's awful low. Uh, in in the general fund at the end of the fiscal year, I'm going. What are they doing with the money, and, and what kind of mismanagement is going on here? Well, and. and you can go on hey, down and you, you come up with the clarifiers down there. Yeah, we need topic. to get back on topic. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, we got way off a of topic, but yeah, there's things that we had to do. Clarifiers, like Mr. Cook mentioned, those are, I forget what, five, six thousand dollars for one of them? I forget, I don't remember, you know, but we do need to get back on under the charter. Well, I mean, and, I, and I apologize I'll for, help for running, you way. know. I'll, I mean, this is stewardship, though. So if this is a value within our community, right. that may be something, you yeah. know, going back with your binders that you want to kind of, you know, digest a little bit that, yes, we have some scars and you know maybe i think it is in our nature to be good stewards uh of this community uh but yeah it is a value so i think it's it's relevant but yeah yeah no i just ahead. i with his permission yes, um sir. i just wanted to give before we get wrapped up if any of you had any feedback <coughs> Ms. please i think Yeah. I don't know. I figured a couple thousand bucks, you know. Yeah. That's a driveway. I mean, it's not a driveway. You see how much cost, and I think a lot of people have no clue. You know, they think, well, we have all this money, but they don't know all the things that it has to be spent. Mm -hmm. That one block of Fenwick was like a quarter million. It was a little over. I think it was like three hundred thousand. But yeah, in that neighborhood. For one block. But but we all we all. And it's just unbelievable. But I think people have have no clue. I mean, it was my day. We, we also got grants to do those streets on, I don't know, I've north, is it Northwoods? Yeah. That, that section of town? We got grants to do those streets, but every time we get a grant, a grant to buy something or do something, we have to match 10 per, at, at least 10%, depending on where the grant came from, but at least 10% of the funds, come, we have to come up with that money whether it's out of the general fund or out of the road department, the water department, you know, whatever department. And if the department don't have it, we have to tap the general fund, which none of us really wants to do because if you run your general fund down, you're gonna have somebody like me showing up at a council meeting wanting to know why you only got 125 bucks. <laughs> so, I mean, I think council, I think we do a good job trying to manage the money, but you know, when you're talking, when you got a $6 million budget, and quite honestly, it's a small budget. $6 million is a small budget for a city this size. Uh, it, it, if we did everything that we needed to do and had rotations on things that we needed to do, we'd have like a 12 or $15 million budget. But with that budget comes higher cost. You know, and I and really education really is key for people to realize mm -hmm. what all the city has to spend that money on. Another thing I don't think, people, you know, don't really realize that. 
Another thing I don't think people realize is so many things were neglected for so long mm -hmm. because we didn't have money. The Scarf Road right. Water That's Tower, it should have been done years ago. Half the streets in this city, um, it's just been neglected because we didn't have the money. So now we have money, we have money, we're starting to catch up on a lot of these things as best we can. So council may need to consider doing something like a minute for stewardship every council meeting. Put one issue out there and try to educate the people that are, you know, not only people at the table here, but say, hey, lesson learned from paving streets. On an average of a Fenwick street that is, you know, half a mile long, costs half a million dollars. You know, just talk about the stewardship part of it. Because Bill's point is very accurate. If things were not maintained, we're in a catch-up. Yeah. But I know people that have bought houses here like myself, and I thought, well, I was going to grow, and my property is going to increase. No, I'll look at my sisters around the world who have their homes that my sister doubled her after having her home for seven years in Calico, Montana. She sold it just so she could buy the Hawaii house, and you know she doubled her money in seven years. Well, that's not happening here, right? And streets are part of it. Schools are part of it. No growth. I mean, yeah, but I think I think property values right now are at a premium here in the yeah. town. If somebody wants to come in, a new house in Twin Creek. There's not too many vacant properties that they can purchase. A new house in well, Twin Creeks is is going up and it's three hundred fifty thousand in yeah. the newspaper. I, I had a realtor contact me and they told me I could sell my home. For, for a quarter of a million dollars, and I laughed at them. I said, I don't think it'll sell in this town. And they go, oh, yeah. And then they started showing me other houses that sold that's close to that. And I go, are you serious? You know, the uh, homes over on in Northwoods are selling for a hundred grand plus. We have a house. And, and people have told me, yep. and some of them you pay that, but you need to tear it down and rebuild it. Or you need to go in and completely rebuild it. And I'm thinking for a hundred grand? Not me. Well, uh, Mr. Yeah. 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 They have to be updated and stuff, you know, to get that. But I just think, you know, that the pricing for for property is is off the charts. I think right now, but it's gonna it's gonna even out. Believe me, it's gonna even out. And I've had realtors say, you know, you, you need to sell now. If you're thinking about selling, you need to do it now. Get that top dollar. And my question back to them is, yeah, if I sell for a quarter of a mil right now, what's it going to cost me to replace it? And how small do I have to go? I think your interest rate, that's what's going to happen. Well, the, in the last bubble. All right. yeah. All yeah. Yeah. Let's get back to this topic. Mr. Hall, okay, so we're going to get going. Well, just yes. I, I'll, I'll try to clean it up. I, I think what you guys are talking about, though, is, I mean, they, most people see diversity and the diversity, that word is mentioned numerous times in the Model City Charter, and I, the, the first inclination, I think, is to think of race and religion and creed and different things, but it's financial uh, diversity as well. Yeah. Um, we have a, a lot of low-income houses. We have a, a you know, sustainable amount of you know, middle-class income, a little bit in Twin Creeks of the upper middle class, but we don't have anything on the higher, uh, higher end, higher threshold, and other successful communities do. Uh, well, how do you get that? That's, that's drawing the families in. Those are the people who are going to make massive investments like that to, to you know, buy an expensive home. And I think you know, using the charter is for strategic marketing purposes, you, you, can, uh, you can address this. Instead of fighting over the peanuts that are left on the floor, you know, we can actually you know, really talk about some you know, major development within the community. But you've got to draw the families in. That's, that's the secret, is, is the families. And, and then them raising children that want to stay here. And, and that, that is how you, you know, the Scarf families, you know, the, those families have, have made this town. And it, it, was, it was the strong families that, that really carried, you know, the town through some, some really, you know, difficult times. But um, just kind of wrapping things up, I uh, really appreciate this. This is exactly what I think what all of the commission and committee members were looking for. Uh, we did kind of want to extract a little bit of feelings and discourse and dialogue. So, you know, we try to, you know, conceptualize exactly what we think you guys are thinking. Um, and, you know, we watch your YouTube videos and, and we try to talk to you guys to get to know you a little bit. Um, but that's, you know, and also just, you know, fostering that trust environment. Um, you guys kind of can see now, you know, we put everything out on the table. There's, you know, no hidden angles here. Um, you know, we're, I hope you guys can kind of see through our work product um, how much time we've invested uh, thus far into this. And I would like to think that it comes from very genuine intentions. Um, we really appreciate all of your time. Um, and to my committee, 
What are our next steps? Next steps. Um, so I will plan on being at the next city council me uh, meeting and, uh, and anyone else from the committee. Um, and we'll go ahead and start uh, opening the dialogue. And maybe I can just open it up. Have you guys had a chance to review our materials? Do you guys feel like this is a good time to you know, schedule another meeting? Okay. Um, and then I will work with the other committee members to find out you know, what their schedules look like. I know Pat's heading out of town for a while. Uh, but maybe it isn't until March. Um, you know, the only thing to keep in the back of your mind is, is we are kind of at, 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 you know, at a stall right now. Uh, so until you guys kind of give that direction, we don't really know where to pivot. Uh, but other than that, thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, uh, thank thanks you guys. all of you guys for opening your, your schedules up for a two-hour meeting. No, this is, this is really impressive. So seriously, yeah. to all of you, this is amazing. I mean, I think this will probably be the, one of the best ones ever. So, all right, so anything else? I'll have to record this for Ms. Burner since she had to leave for an emergency. So, I just want to say thank you to our um, team, yeah. you know, the Charter Review, and thank you, Don Hall, for leading this. Uh, you did an amazing mm -hmm. job. Yeah. Thank you. Same to you. Yes. Thank you very uh, much. Mr. Mayor, I've got a comment, and then I'll make a motion. Uh, does anybody else have anything they would like to say before I make the motion to adjourn? Because I don't want to cut anybody off. That's got yes, ma'am. I just would like to thank that the commission is working on. It's just amazing to me uh, how hard they're working on, how fast they're working on it. Yeah. Uh, and I'm really excited about the work that's going on. Right. I I agree with Mrs. Zimmerman. Uh, it, it it it's nice to see that there is a diversity on the commission that they volunteered to do this because quite honestly when we try to get volunteers it's like nobody's available <laughs> so with that if nobody else has anything else to say thank you thank you oh you're welcome thank you, thank you ma'am uh mr mayor i move to adjourn second so motion by uh, lindsay first and second by graham Okay. So, Mayor, how do you? Yes. <laughs> uh, Mr. Grimm. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bond. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Sure, we can't discuss this more. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> and, and, sure, we um, can. <laughs> I said yes. Gotcha. <laughs> We're good. Another dollar.